I've seen a lot of tragedies. I've seen a lot of different things on this job, and obviously a lot of disturbing things. If you're one of those persons that that lets it sit with you, and when you go home and let it bother you, or t you take it home to your family, then no, you won't survive this job. Wilson Wong, police officer, three plus one, LAPD SWAT. Initiate. Being a plus one, I would say, in SWAT is uh, very prestigious to be a team leader. Hey, if this guy made it to be a plus one within SWAT, then you know this guy knows what he's doing. When it comes down to working, he's all about business, doing the right thing, making sure that you are ready to go at a moment's notice, and always reminding you, hey, you always got to be ready because you never know when you got to be ready for the situation at hand. The LAPD SWAT office, and this is where we get all of our, our administrative uh, work done. Here it is, uh, obviously you can see that it's, it's separated from all the other plaques. These are all the people that I came in here with and the only ones that remain here in the unit right now as an operator is myself and Rick Gonzalo and Keith Bacon, but Keith Bacon is pretty much done. Um, Chester McMillian is my lieutenant who's sitting right on the cubicle on the other side. He has since promoted uh, to sergeant and lieutenant status, so that's where he is now. As we walk this way, you'll see some of the, the military gifts that we receive from different units. We work with many different agencies across the nation, and we work with different military uh, units throughout the, uh, the world. Uh, we have the Navy SEALs, uh, Delta, uh, all the special ops, a large um, wall of, of gifts from the, these agencies. So this is how they thank us for us training with them or them training with us. Uh, three fallen officers that I have worked with in the past, and. Uh, since I've been here in the last 22 years. But it's part of what we do. Uh, and you gotta be a strong person to accept something like that. It's, it's, it's tough when it does happen. If you don't have the, the strength to move on, you won't make it through this, through this career. Wong 114. Can you see if you can get hold of it? Be good, be good, thanks. Some people from the uh, tech cadre. And see if they can pick up uh, any armor. With 15 police cars that are running code yeah. three. That should be David to Wong or anybody at the training site. 50 David, go ahead. Like right now, they have this target location contained, patrol, and so when we get there. Um, we'll get all geared up and then we'll go down to the target or the house itself one, 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 and we'll end up uh, taking over the entire scene and we'll relieve patrol from their positions and then we'll, that's when we'll start going to work. You find yourself uh, getting the call and then you find yourself trying to control your emotions and your adrenaline to the point where you don't really uh, get yourself in an accident or anything like that. And the biggest thing for a new person is to get out of that tunnel vision because you, you, you find yourself at the, the call-up situation and you're in a tunnel vision because you're just the adrenaline that takes over. So with experience and tenure and, and, uh, and just responding all the time to different types of situations, you eventually will overcome all that and then you'll start to think as a tactician and start applying everything that we've uh, We've taught the guys in training. This job is very tough. It's very tough on, on a family. It's very tough uh, on yourself sometimes. You know, I told them this job isn't for everybody. Uh, you know, become a doctor, become a nurse, or something like that. But if you like the excitement and you like to be outdoors and you can handle the tragedies that you're going to come across out here in this world, you know, I think this this is a fun job. But with that said too, this is a very rewarding job because you're giving back to a lot of good people out here. You know, somebody has to do this. SWAT team surrounded the neighborhood near Louise Avenue, about a half mile north of the 118 freeway. This all started around 4 o'clock this morning, and there are reports, and they were working on a plot to do a burglary or a robbery. And she escaped the situation and alerted officers of what they were planning. And when officers arrived here, 
They say that that man then was holed up in the home. There are reports that he has a weapon and may even possibly be wearing body armor. Neighbors tell me that they started uh, being alerted that uh, they needed to leave their homes, the homes, in fact, that are close to this house that is just around the corner here around 7 o'clock this morning. And being in his squad for almost 10 years now um, as an operator and him as a citizen squad leader, you get to understand his standards and his high expectations for those in his squad and in the unit for that matter. But that's what we do, you know. Um, sometimes we joke about it. It's a nervous joke, but no one expects it to happen. Are we prepared for it to happen? Yes, some of us are, some of us aren't. You know, generally the older guys are, you know, but that's why we, we train so hard, so it doesn't happen. We generally like to take the fight to the person, okay? They're showing an aggressive, uh, an aggressive <clears throat> action towards us, towards the police then basically because of our training, a high level of training, it keeps us safe and, and like I said, we will take the fight today.